Hello, my name is Laura. I'm a visual artist and I'm also a teacher. I'm really delighted to be working with you all on this series of online video workshop visual art tutorials. The series of workshops have been generously commissioned by the Courthouse Arts Centre Tinnahealy, County Wicklow, and it's funded by the Arts Council of Ireland. In this series of workshops, we're going to explore a range of art making techniques and processes that artists, designers and creative practitioners use in their own practices. We're going to be looking at colour, line, form, shapes, textures and materials. Most importantly, in every workshop, we're going to have the chance to explore our own creativity and imaginations. I'm really looking forward to working with you all in this series and I can't wait to see your own imaginative responses. Please share some images of your work with the Courthouse Art Centre Tinnahealy. Thank you. Hello and welcome to today's visual art workshop. In today's workshop I'm going to show you how to work in a 3D way. So 2D is when we're working on a flat surface like using paper but for today's workshop I'm going to be showing you how to work with 3D sculptural objects, things that you could hold in your hand. Um, I'm going to be guiding you through a recipe to make a dough mixture using really simple materials that you'd have at home like flour, salt and water. With these ingredients we're going to make an air dry clay that goes really hard and we're also going to make a material like play-doh which is really soft and if you keep it sealed in plastic after using it keeps for quite a while. I've designed this workshop with primary school children in mind and with the making of the recipes some adult support will be, will be needed. The workshop is suitable for all ages though with support and older students and adults will also enjoy this workshop and can use the recipe for lots of making um, ideas. So let's get started. First we're going to make our sauce dough. For this you're going to need some plain flour, salt, a mixing bowl, a measuring cup, water and some vegetable oil. First you're going to pour two cups of plain flour into your bowl and then mix in one cup of salt. Mix the flour and salt together. Now pour in two tablespoons of vegetable oil next you're going to pour in one full cup measuring cup of water ideally the water is quite warm because this helps um, the dough mix nicely you're pouring the water in slowly bit by bit and making up a doughy paste as you go. You can use a spatula and you can also mix with your fingers. Keep on kneading the dough and mixing the dough together with your hands to get it nice and firm into a ball. It's nice and stretchy. Try and get all the little bits of dough all together in one ball. 
mix it lots to have a nice consistency with your dough. Now you can start adding colour to your dough. I've separated my big dough ball into smaller parts and I'm adding different colour food dyes to each part. You can try and mix it with a spoon um, if you don't want to get your hands too messy like mine are. It's only food colouring though so it's completely safe to use and it will wash off with time and quite a lot of washing. So I'm mixing up separate colours in my dough balls. I'm using the primary colours of red, yellow and blue. Using your homemade Play-Doh in the primary colours of yellow, red and blue, you can start to mix and Play-Doh colour mix tons more unusual colours in all sorts of shades. I'm making peaches, purples, greens, different shades of greens, oranges, purples. You can make tons and tons of these in many different uh, sizes and shades, like a rainbow of Play-Doh. Enjoy mixing and matching and sculpting and moulding. Using some of my small, originally coloured Play-Doh balls, I'm going to start sculpting and moulding. Keep pressing with your fingers to help the Play-Doh get really um, soft to work with. You can add little details. I'm deciding to make some kind of imaginary dinosaur and I'm using my fingers to make tiny little scales that are going to go all along the body and also maybe the tail of my creature. Keep smoothing and working the dough with your fingers to keep it all together. You don't want any cracks to form when you're, when you're working with the Play-Doh. Let your imagination go wild. You can add all sorts of details going to give my dinosaur creature some purple eyes, why not? And using some of the yellow play-doh, keeping it soft by rolling it, I'm going to give it a beak. So there we go. <laughs> It's also really important to keep your Play-Doh in a plastic bag um, when you're not using it. This helps it stay soft and it doesn't get too um, dried out. You can roll your Play-Doh into a sausage shape with your fingers and I'm going to turn my sausage shape into some kind of snake creature wiggling along the table. 
really looking forward to seeing images of the type of Play-Doh creatures you make and the colours that you can make as well. I'm going to give it little purple polka dot spots all along the snake's back and eyeballs as well and another yellow tail. Making another little creature with scales and little horns. Using my imagination and just letting um, ideas come to me as I'm working. I've decided to make a rainbow with um, different Play-Doh colours that I've made. So I'm using lots of different colours. I've got some greens, blues, purples, pinky reds, oranges and yellows. I'm going to roll each piece of Play-Doh out into a long sausage shape. And each one is a little bit longer. And this Play-Doh has a nice stretchy feel to it so you can stretch out your play-doh and making up each colour of the rainbow. Each colour is longer than the one that came before. So I'd really like to see your Play-Doh rainbows as well, made with your own colours. Playing with Play-Doh is something the whole family can enjoy, not just um, something to do on your own. And you can also have fun blending the different um, Play-Doh balls together, like we're doing here. We've decided that we're going to create lots of little play-doh balls that we're going to turn into beads and this time we're not going to tidy them back up into the plastic bag to use another time we're going to let these air dry and by letting them dry in the air just in the kitchen or your bedroom or anywhere um, somewhere where they get a lot of light they become hard so within a week they should have become really, really hard and pretty solid and secure. So we're mixing up tons of different colours and letting them kind of blend into each other.
we're using barbecue skewer sticks and these are really handy because they're not too wide a pencil would be a little bit wide and um, but the the hole a skewer makes is nice and narrow and with our roly bead balls we're threading them onto the barbecue skewer which gives them a little hole and it's also a really handy place for your skewers to harden and within a week we've got bead jewellery. I've decided to make up more of my salt dough mixture using the very same process as we did the first time round. So that's mixing in two cups of flour, one cup of salt, two tablespoons of oil and pouring in one cup of water very slowly, giving the dough a chance to get nicely mixed together with your hands or a spoon and slowly adding the water. This time, I'm not adding any colour at all. I'm going to leave it just the plain colour. And then when this um, dries, I'm going to paint it. So this time I'm not making Play-Doh. I'm making um, salt dough that will air dry. Now I'm kneading my salt dough mixture, rolling it into balls, and I'm starting to sculpt my object. I've decided I want to make a little tiny imaginary creature. So I'm rolling all the different parts of the body of my creature and really roll it very well with your hands. Keep it nice and warm. Use your fingers to keep each part of the, of the creature nice and soft and really make sure that they're sticking together really well. So you can add a tiny bit of water if you need to when you're attaching things like the feet to the body. Um, of course this is just an idea that's come into my mind to make a little um, imaginary creature and please do use your imagination and make whatever creature you feel like with lots of different um, details like tails, ears, horns. Do keep each part of the creature quite chunky because otherwise it might crack and fall apart as it's drying. So keep it quite chunky. And very carefully use your fingers to mould each part together so it's all sticking into place quite well. I've decided I'm also going to make the letters of my name, Laura, in salt dough. So I'm rolling out each letter, making sure that they're not too um, skinny or narrow because they might crack when they're drying. So keep it quite chunky. Then when I've made all of the letters of my name, I'm using the top of a pencil to mark out a little hole in each so that when they dry, I can hang them up on a little rail um, or hang them from uh, something to make a little wall hanging. So be careful that it doesn't get too narrow and, and to crack. So be quite careful as you're making the, um, the holes at the top of your name. After about a week, your salt dough letters will be ready to work with or your salt dough creatures or whatever salt dough sculptural objects you've made. Do make sure during the week that they're drying to turn them over um, to make sure they dry on both sides. Now you can get ready and start painting um, and decorating your salt dough. You can do some colour mixing and give maybe two coats of paint to your work so you get a nice solid 
um, color. Enjoy mixing with paints as you color your clay creation. You can add lots of detail to your clay sculptural work and colour, paint different parts of your um, creature or whatever you've made in different colours using lots of colour mixing techniques. Um, an egg carton holder can be a really handy paint mixing um, pot as well if you don't have a plastic container to hand or if you'd like to use something more environmentally friendly. You can also use an object like a little um, wooden barbecue skewer or a little cocktail stick to get nice details on your painting work. Little spots and um, details on your creature um, and you can also flick the paint on. It's messy but it's fun to get lots of little detailed paint marks on your objects. Enjoy playing around with lots of different paint techniques to get really colourful and very creative and original artworks. Give your um, clay letters about 24 hours to dry and then make sure of course they're painted on both sides. And then you can, using some twine, start threading through each letter so you can hang them up as a display. They could go somewhere on the wall or hanging on the window. Um, that's really up to you. The clay beads that we made, they've been drying on the skewer for about a week and I've turned them during that week to make sure they're dry on all sides. You'll have noticed the colour has changed quite a bit. It fades because the food colouring is a natural uh, dye, so that does fade. But I quite like that soft colour. So I'm taking them gently off the skewer, really carefully so they don't break because they are very fragile and there's lots there, lots of different sizes to work with. I'm threading a couple of beads onto my twine, just all gathered at one end and knotting them to keep them in place and to secure them from falling off the thread. And I'm going to use this little bead collection as a bookmark for a book I'm reading at the moment. These will be really um, nice gifts for somebody and there's lots of other ideas you could use for them. You could use them as charms for um, handbags or wallets, many different um, possibilities. I've decided to make myself a necklace. So I'm threading on all of my salt dough beads in different arrangements, thinking about colour and size as I do it. then just really simply I'm going to knot it at the back and this is quite a long one because there's so many beads so lots of ideas for jewellery making here you could also make a bracelet lots and lots of possibilities for creative and very original jewellery making Thanks 
so much for taking part in today's making art workshop. We used everyday materials like flour, salt and water to make a salt dough. If you um, leave these in plastic bags, they stay nice and squidgy and you can use them again and again. If you don't leave them in plastic bags and you let them dry out, they'll get really hard. And I molded some into beads and now I've got a necklace. I've also got a, a little bookmark here. And there's tons of different decorating craft ideas you could do with the salt dough beads. Also, we didn't put any food colouring into some of our dough and we use that as a clay material so using it like a salt clay and we uh, sculpted a little creature and then when it was fully dry after about a week dry in all parts i started to paint my little creature using a paintbrush and then for the little details and spots i used a little cocktail stick or a wooden skewer so you don't have to use a brush you can also use other other tools to get nice detail in your work i also made the letters of my name in our salt clay let them dry for about a week and then when they're fully dry started decorating them with paints and also experimented with paint splatters I'm really excited and really curious as well to see what you can make with the salt dough mixture. We'd be delighted at Courthouse Arts Centre Tinahili to see photos of your work. So please do share your sculptural making. You can email your, your salt dough work to director at courthousearts.ie or you can share your work to Courthouse Art Centre Tinahili Facebook page. I really hope you enjoyed today's workshop and this salt dough clay mixture is something that you can use for so many different activities. I really hope you enjoy working. Thank you.